Hi, you Knowledge Hungry Trust users. In this video, I'll talk about spacers and the product group of short trust modules, as well as things that need to be considered when using them. Spacers are normally used to increase component length, so it correctly fits with the usual standard lengths in steps of 500 mm. Let's assume you are building a fixed lag ground support and use three-way corners as junctions to the lags. This structure can be constructed using regular welded corners or cubes or a combination of both. This sometimes ends up in a situation where a difference in length needs to be resolved using a spacer or an extension module. Here are some examples of spacers. They range from 10 mm for a very small type of truss like this, over 40 mm, then the next one is 105 mm and 210 mm. Depending on the brand, they are available as individual item per main tube, such as these, or others are already welded to a frame with four main cords. So this is a 210 mm without a vertical diagonal, 250 mm without a vertical diagonal, and this one 250 as well, but 390 truss, including the vertical or horizontal diagonal. So if we take the example I had previously given, a spacer with a length of 210 mm is required. Two spacers with a length of 105 could also be used as well. Now we come to an important question. Which accessory do I use, when do I use it, and where is it best placed within the structure? It looks obvious to mount this element directly to the cube, but then we have other things to consider. For better understanding, let's take a look at what happens with the spacer. Let me explain using a model I've prepared at home. I have a cube, a regular piece of truss and two spacers of 210 millimeters in between. What happens if the cube is mounted on top of a vertical truss and a shear force is applied to the horizontal truss? First of all, nothing happens because I have already tightened the bolts that connect all parts together. However, when the force increases, you can see a deformation of the square into a parallelogram. This means that the bending moment is occurring with the spacers. If the shear force is very small, the bending moment is also very small and individual spacers can be used. However, when the shear force is higher, the bending moments in the spacers and the adjacent components like the cube and the horizontal truss becomes very large. These bending moments reduce the load bearing capacity and this is why individual spacers should not be used. But if I now replace the individual spacers with a frame element, here with 250 millimeter length, the diagonal serves for the transmission of the shear force. The shear force is then transformed into an actual force in the diagonal. This kind of spacer includes diagonal bracings in order to form triangles and therefore works like a framework in which only compressive and tensile forces occur. So it has the same load carrying capacity as the regular truss. Okay, but what is the consequence of knowing all that? Unfortunately, there's no rule of thumb when spacers without diagonals should or should not be used. This decision always depends on the specific configuration and load. But as a general rule, spacers that are not equipped with diagonals should be placed in a position where there's a low shear force only. This position is usually as far as possible from supports or suspension points. As soon your spacer includes a diagonal or is otherwise structurally reinforced, you can use it anywhere. I hope this video will let you think about the position of spacers without diagonals the next time. Bye bye! <coughs>